Well, psychonutrition is the science of providing the nervous system with the correct nutrients to ensure that the nervous system works properly. And the nervous system comprises all of our sensory organs like sight, sound, touch, taste, smell. But it's not just that side of the nervous system which provides input to the brain that's important. The parts of it that run our bodies, um, activating muscles, um, running the digestive system, the heart, the lungs. In fact, our entire uh, existence really depends on the nervous system. Well, if something goes wrong with the nervous system, there's a whole range of things that can happen. At the least intrusive end of the scale, we can start to get malfunctions occurring in uh, organ function, for instance. The gastrointestinal tract doesn't work properly, um, sight becomes distorted, anxiety levels start to increase, as does depression. Um, taste changes, or we, you know, at the, at the top end of these scales, we start to look at the hallucinations and we start to hear things that are not reality or see things that are not real. Um, at the more critical end of the scale, anxiety becomes uh, uncontrollable, the hallucinations start, paranoia creeps in, and psychotic states become the norm. Eventually, um, organs stop functioning properly and that potentially creates life-threatening situations. It certainly involves a whole range of disease states that we're aware of. At the Golding Institute, we concentrate primarily on dealing with the nutritional deficiencies that cause anxiety disorders and depression, all the way from mild disorders all the way through to the schizophrenias where uh, larger interventions are required. And those larger interventions uh, are termed orthomolecular medicine. But that, by definition, also has to target the physiological issues of gut malabsorption, toxicities, and, and allergies. Well, you could say that orthomolecular medicine is a part of psychonutrition in a way. Orthomolecular medicine is a term originally coined by Linus Pauling in the 1950s to describe the use of um, optimum doses of nutrients to treat disease states, a whole range of disease states. Um, a lot of people in the traditional medical model have attacked the orthomolecular approach because in some cases the dosage rates of nutrients just seem absolutely massive. Um, but Linus Pauling actually received a Nobel Prize for his work on this and we now have a, a much better understanding as to why some people require larger intakes of vitamins or um, uh, micronutrients because of gut malfunction or dependencies. Uh, as we become more aware of the tremendous effect of poor nutrition on the body and the mind uh, through the work of um, people like Hoffer and Osmond, uh, Pfeiffer, Frederick, Saul and, and a whole raft of other people that have been working in this area. The science has expanded a great deal to include an understanding of the effects of toxins and allergies on the mix um, and also the, the use of broad spectrum antibiotics and damage that it does. So psychonutrition deals with the broader spectrum of physical illness and nutrition on mental health and the health of the nervous system in general. Hmm. Well, good question. Let's not confuse the quantity of food with the quality of food. And an important component in this equation is our ability to absorb nutrition uh, from the foods in the first place. So let's look at this first. There's growing evidence and research to say that our overuse of antibiotics actually destroys the normal function of the gut flora. And that creates a more toxic environment, not just for the bowel, one of uh, which uh, his role is not just to absorb nutrients but also to take care of the toxins that we put into ourselves through the, the gastrointestinal tract and the stuff we put down our mouth. But it uh, also creates a more toxic environment for the, uh, the body as a whole. And this allows the build-up of toxins which tend towards destroying the lining of the bowel and other organs with the net effect that we can no longer absorb nutrients that we're taking in. 
Basically, the food then causes inflammation of the bowel, immune reactions, which makes it sensitive to a whole range of foods. And it's also part of the reason why there's a massive increase in celiac disease, for instance, now um, based on gluten intolerance, which we're all intolerant of anyway, but some of the modern wheats and the modern grains have higher levels of gluten than they've ever had. That affects our ability to absorb nutrients and as a result affects the nervous system. To complicate matters further, we no longer live in a society where the foods we eat have the nutrient value that they used to. You know, we live in a society of fast foods and, and convenience packaged, pre-packaged foods that are primarily based on white flour, sugars and dairy. If you have a look at the ingredients labels on, on these foods and, and you'll be staggered at how little nutrition is in a lot of them. Um, even some of the gluten free foods that are now available through supermarkets, if you have a look at the list of products, they're, they're full of sugars as well, which is just as toxic and in fact more toxic in some cases. None of these foods are tolerated by the human system and that just further exacerbates the problem. Um, poisoning ourselves? Yeah, pretty much yes. Our, our foods are poor quality in terms of nutrients. The mainstays of our diet all create problems uh, and reduce our ability to absorb essential nutrients and this in turn affects our entire physiological system and all our organs. Well not just moods and emotions, it, it uh, affects our thoughts and how we think um, and the, the ease that we can think properly and, and clearly. The neurotransmitters that are essential parts of the signaling uh, of one, uh, from one cell to the next in the nervous system are compromised. And, and when they're compromised, we end up with a, a shortage of these critical biochemicals. Nothing works properly when those signals are not transmitting through the nervous system properly. In the beginning, we just become aware of chronic tiredness or extreme mood swings or foggy thinking or changes in perception. Then the anxiety begins to increase and depression becomes deeper and it becomes chronic in the end. As it progresses we start to see and hear things. Um, in our society, for instance, 7% of people will become voice hearers. That is, uh, they hallucinate that people are talking to them when no one is there. Now, I'm not talking about just imagining voices, they actually hear the voices. And those voices are usually being critical of them. What we now understand is that it's actually the thoughts, the internal unconscious thoughts being injected straight into the neural pathways. And that's effectively a form of psychosis. Now the same thing happens with visual hallucinations as well. Well yes it is serious. And especially if you're suffering from a mental illness when you're experiencing these things, it doesn't matter whether it's an anxiety or depression, or you start moving into the areas of OCDs and ADHDs, bipolar and, and the schizophrenias. If you're experiencing these symptoms, you really know it, either as a victim or as a carer of somebody that is experiencing them. It is devastating. It causes all sorts of problems and the suicide rates are very high in the high-end anxiety disorders. Well, yes and no. Um, it's not as simple as all that. At best, modern antipsychotics and antidepressants help control the levels of neurotransmitters in the brain, but they don't actually fix the problem. You know, we look for long-term resolution of the actual problem of micronutrient deficiency and toxicity to attempt to fix the problem permanently. The science of psychonutrition does that with a high degree of success in a complex environment. I've been working in this area now for 30 odd years and the the component of anxiety disorders which I specialize in that is attributable directly to nutritional deficiencies is somewhere between 50 and 90 percent depending on the intrusive nature of the anxiety disorder. Um, even at low levels in, in generalized anxiety disorders for instance uh, the role of nutrition in that uh, problem is around 50%. Drugs are very useful as a temporary solution to anxiety and depression. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be using drugs at all, 
um, they're essential in assisting with the symptoms of these disorders while the body is repairing and while the real problem is solved. And that doesn't help uh, or doesn't happen overnight. Um, you know, in some cases with the extreme anxiety disorders, it can take months or even a couple of years to resolve the problem because of the damage that's been done to the gut and the absorptive system and, and the method of, of the, the biological or the more biochemical reactions that are being uh, dealt with. Now, no doubt I'll get pilloried by the drug companies for saying this, but anxiety and depression are not caused by lack of drugs and neither are the more aggressive mental illnesses. Well, yes, a growing number of medical practitioners do, but let's face it, the, the traditional model of medicine has been about disease and, and not health. Um, whilst there are more and more practitioners around the world are dissatisfied with the existing tools to help people and are learning more about the importance of nutrition and even things like the damage that antibiotics do. But we're still a long way from cre creating a, a generalized philosophy of wellness as a sustainable human enterprise instead of treating disease when it's already taken hold. Um, and dare I say, you know, there's a lot more money in disease than there is in health in a lot of cases because of the way we think about it. But in reality, there are many, many opportunities there um, for people to change their perception from disease to health, and the consequences will be quite dramatic. Um, we couldn't find any um, really structured training materials for medical practitioners and mental health workers anywhere in the world. So we actually created an online postgraduate diploma in psychonutrition and orthomolecular medicine to train doctors and psychiatrists, psychologists and other mental health practitioners in the core disciplines required. Um, and that's receiving excellent acceptance and take up uh, worldwide. Now, if we could get the governments of the world to understand the tremendous economic and health benefits for society through implementing and teaching these disciplines, the, the burden of health on society would be much, much lower. As it is, um, the World Health Organization is projecting that mental health will be the second highest contributor to disability worldwide by 2020. And we're talking about a cost of tens of trillions of dollars worldwide. It's just unbelievable burden on society. A good education program, not only for practitioners, but for the public, would cost a fraction of that and save over a billion people from traumatic mental illness. So it is important, it should have far, far higher priority than it is, and uh, we're trying to get there. So spread the word.